Hello everyone, welcome back on the channel. And uh, it's been a while since I've made a video and there's a reason for that. And this, uh, this video is actually going to be uh, explaining this reason and sharing with you a few tips and tricks on how I got there. So the main reason is that I changed uh, my, set my setup a bit. I upgraded to two GTX 1070s. So they're running in SLI mode and with uh, most of you guys um, might have heard but with the latest hotfix by uh, Larkin Martin uh, it addressed uh, some critical issues with SLI and um, I must say it it's running pretty pretty good right now but you have to tweak around with it uh, quite a bit. Alright. Um, so yes, so two GTX 1070s, uh, I have a new case uh, and some other components that are not quite critical, but um, one that is <laughs> quite critical is uh, my new um, monitor. Uh, I got myself a 4K uh, display by Samsung, which is fantastic. Um, I like it a lot, and uh, it explained my the need to get a second GTX 1070. Um, so, in terms of uh, simulator, we are running uh, P3D, of course, um, and we are sitting with the uh, PMDG 747V3 at Amsterdam by Fly Tampa. And uh, the aim of this video, as you will have uh, inferred from the title, is to show you how I achieved a very smooth um, experience in my uh, simulator. Um, I'm going to show you my uh, P3D settings, my NVIDIA inspector settings, and finally the last touch which uh, really made, made it for me. So. Um, I'm just just before we go into the settings I just w want to show you how smooth um, my experience is at the moment uh, it really is <laughs> it, it really is a revelation um, it, it never was that smooth for me um, I'm I'm keeping 30 FPS and the the more imp the most important factor and you will have noticed right now it's that it's almost uh, stutter free. Uh, of course, it's not perfect. I still have to tweak around and play with uh, my settings. And uh, please keep in keep in mind that I'm actually recording 4K footage right now. And um, although I use a SSD, uh, it, it's still uh, pretty hard on the system. But that aside, um, I think you will concur with me that this is a very smooth. Um, you know, it's a very smooth experience, and there's one key uh, tweak that uh, got me there, and that I will share with you uh, after um, showing you my um, my settings. All right, guys. So I'm going to end the recording of the gameplay right now. Jump into a windowed uh, recording, and uh, we're gonna um, start with the P3D settings. All right, guys. See you in a bit. Alright, so here uh, we go with uh, P3D settings and uh, just quick disclaimer, this is, of course, this is not permanent. I'm going to play around with the settings, try to increase some of them and try to lower some other and uh, just to achieve the best quality for the best performance. Um, of course, I want to keep it uh, very smooth as I uh, showed you in the first part of this video. And uh, that's, you know, that's the aim of all of us, uh, and especially of you watching this uh, right now. So quickly, um, these are my settings, as you can see, two GTX 1070s, so I, I was not lying. Uh, they are running in SLI. The resolution is 4K, as you can see right here. Um, FXAA is turned off. Uh, since I'm running 4K, I uh, can only uh, run four samples for the NTL aliasing and it's, you know, it, it's perfect. Uh, the more, um, the higher you go in resolution, the less you need anti-aliasing. And again, sorry if I, I mess up some words. I am, um, 
obviously not a native English speaker, so I will uh, stumble on some words uh, from time to time. All right, so moving on, texture filtering is uh, to the max, so 16 times. Texture resolution, uh, why not put it at ultra? Um, I can handle it, so, you know, if you have uh, a system that resembles mine, uh, these are definitely uh, settings you can try to achieve or work with. If you have a lower, um, you know, a lower end uh, system compared to mine, uh, you can always, you know, tweak around and play with stuff, uh, like texture resolution, there's almost no difference between ultra high and medium, and I'm being honest here uh, you can really turn that down if you need to um, but that's that's not how you're gonna get stutter uh, free um, gameplay and I'm going to show you uh, that last part at the end of this video so uh, vsync is on this is very important for the stutter free gameplay vsync on triple buffering on and target frame rate is unlimited tessellation is enabled obviously now scenery um, again I'm going to play with uh, this quite a lot uh, um, still but for the moment uh, the LOD um, is at high tessellation factor ultra mesh is at 5 meters and texture resolution is at 15 centimeters water detail um, it all depends I mean if I'm flying into San Francisco I will try and up that a little bit, but for now, um, I put it at medium. Um, scenery uh, complexity, uh, I have, for the scenery objects, everything is at dense. Again, there's not, to be honest, there's not much of a difference between dense and ultra dense. Uh, that's just my own personal experience, but again, uh, play with it and see what works best for you. Now, special effects, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what it does. Um, I don't see any difference with it on or off. I think it's very, um, it, it really depends, you know, it, on particles, fireworks. I don't see that very often and I don't really care for them. Um, I might try and see what it really does uh, in the near future, but for now, I just have it, you know, turned all the way down to low. I don't really mind. Uh, if any one of you in the comment section can tell me what it does, uh, it will be much appreciated. Alright, so brightness is at uh, 0.85, bloom 0.25 and saturation 1.25. Uh, dynamic reflections are off, landing lights uh, are uh, on. Now shadow quality, I'm actually going to turn that up to medium. Um, I don't think it's going to uh, affect the you know the, the performance quite drastically so let's turn that up to medium and the shadow cast distance you can uh, see for yourself as well sorry as well as the what uh, what cast shadow on uh, on things in the environment so now to weather uh, I have cloud draft distance at 90 miles and cloud coverage at maximum. Uh, this is so it doesn't conflict with uh, active sky, so it's better to have it at maximum. And uh, now uh, traffic, I don't run it any traffic personally. Um, I don't, I don't feel like it adds a lot to my experience. Um, but I mean, you can turn up road vehicles a bit, ships and fer ferries if you want. And uh, I still, um, I, I'm, I, I'm yet to get a decent uh, traffic um, add-on, so I don't really mind for, <laughs> for the standard uh, FSX or P3D traffic, so I don't care for that. All right, so these are my P3D settings. Now let's move on to the NVIDIA Inspector settings. All right, guys, so now on to the NVIDIA Inspector profile. Um, so here it is. And of course, I'm not... Uh, any sort of professional. This is all gathered. Uh, everything I have here is all gathered from um, uh, numerous sources. Um, I'm sorry I cannot link them all, but this is what I've come up with. This is what works 
best uh, for me. Now, um, so the SLI compatibility bits, uh, it should be pre-selected, but if it's not, make sure it's the good one. So you have uh, a lot to choose from and uh, make sure to choose the one with P3D in it. Now for sync and refresh, uh, just don't touch anything here, uh, but make sure to turn off, um, you know, turn off and force off G-Sync. You don't want G-Sync uh, interacting with uh, your simulator at all. Um, so for anti-aliasing, um, the mode, uh, I just simply select override uh, the application settings um, and I use four times sparse grid super sampling. Um, again, this is this doesn't really come from from me, but this is what I've uh, been using uh, for um, some time now. For uh, texture filtering, I use a uh, sixteen times and user defined high quality for texture filtering and um, off for trilinear optimization. Now this is probably the most important bit. Um, for the multi-display mixed GPU acceleration, I use single display performance mode. And for uh, power management, I use prefer maximum performance. Um, I've heard some people say that it's actually not the best thing to use, but it's, it has always worked very well with me. So that's, uh, that's what I personally recommend. Now, if you're running SLI, um, I mean, it should be set uh, automatically, but if it's not, uh, you can uh, get inspired from my settings right here. So that does it for the NVIDIA uh, profile, uh, NVIDIA Inspector profile. Uh, and now I'm going to address what really did the trick for me. All right, let's do it, guys. All right, so what really did the trick for me uh, was going into NVIDIA control panel and remember when I told you that uh, having G, um, sorry, having VSync on was very important. Well, this is why. What I, what I um, truly recommend to you guys is um, your display is probably going to be a 60 hertz display. And what you should do is go into NVIDIA control panel. So right click, go to NVIDIA control panel and um, you should select the display you're using to fly uh, with P3D or FSX and set it to 30 hertz. Um, now, my display, as you can see, I don't have the 60 hertz option, but I do, it's just that it's under PC. But um, you should be able to set it uh, to 30 hertz, and this really, really did the trick for me, um, especially if you have a 4K display. Um, but what it does is that when you're going to be using a V-Sync, it's going to match perfectly your uh, display, um, your display uh, f um, refresh rate with your uh, FPS. And that's the main problem with the stuttering. The stuttering is, due, is, is caused uh, not by uh, the FPS itself. Um, prior to achieving this uh, level of smoothness, I was running at 45, 50 frames per second, but still having very um, annoying and very uh, rude, almost um, stuttering, uh, even with 45 and 50 frames per second. But um, the revelation really uh, came when I um, switched to 30 Hertz. And of course, uh, it's a compromise. Um, if you have a 30 Hertz, uh, desk desktop, you might not like it uh, too much. Uh, it makes uh, things a bit uh, sluggish, but you can get used to it. And of course, you can switch to switch back to 60 hertz when you're not flying. But if you want a, I mean, I cannot guarantee anything, but I've been struggling so much with stutters, and this really, really did the trick for me. So I hope it does the trick for you. Um, of course, you, you, you've got to be able to hit the 30 FPS. Uh, this video is not so much about how to get higher FPS, higher frame rates, but it's how to get a very, very smooth gameplay. So the two crucial components of uh, this is to set your refresh rate uh, 
I do it through uh, NVIDIA control panel, but I'm sure you can do it through other means, but set it to 30 Hertz. And then in P3D, you want to have VSync on and um, it should really improve your experience. Of course, you've still got um, to be able to hit 30 frames, but it doesn't matter if you dip down below to 25, 26, 27, 28 or 29, it should still be very smooth. Um, it's, it's, it's truly something I've never had before. I've never seen before. It's amazing. I'm very happy with the results. I've been, you know, I've been struggling a lot and you have been struggling a lot probably with achieving a decent experience in P3D or FSX. And I, um, I hope this can solve some of you guys' problem. Um, and this is gonna do for me today. Uh, of course, now that I'm back into the game, uh, there's a, a much more videos coming from me. But this was just to address uh, or try to, you know, add my personal no knowledge um, to this, uh, you know, to this very common problem of stutters. All right, everyone. So if you like this video, don't hesitate to leave a like and subscribe. More content of this type is going to be coming in the next few uh, weeks and months. Um, and yeah, that's going to be all from me today. Uh, if you have any comments, any questions, any suggestions, uh, please leave them in the comment section down below and I will catch you very soon. Bye bye guys.